So the Amalfi Coast is one of the most beautiful coastlines in Europe, but is also one of the most expensive. But I have found a way to do this trip cheaply as possible. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can do this yourself and how best to see this beautiful area of Italy. And the first thing we always need to establish wherever we stay anywhere in the world is where do we base ourselves? Where is the best place to stay in any region? Now the Amalfi Coast is only a 50 kilometer stretch of coastline and a lot of the towns, although very beautiful, are very, very expensive. But for me, the most cost-effective town to stay in is the town of Sorrento. Now, although Sorrento isn't actually technically part of the Amalfi Coast, it's right next to it, it has great access to the region and is the cheapest place for you to stay. Now, just because it's the cheapest does not mean it is not beautiful. This town is absolutely stunning. You can get lost in the beautiful medieval streets, the great shops, the beautiful restaurants and beaches and coastlines. And another reason why I think it's such a great place for you to stay is because it's so well connected. It has a great connection to Naples uh, because it has a train station which leads straight to the centre of Naples. So that means if when you land at Naples airport, it's more accessible for you to get to without trying to arrange your own transport, which can be quite expensive and difficult to arrange if you're going quite deep into the Amalfi Coast itself. And also, as well as being well connected by trains, it has a dock, so it gives you a base for you to go and explore various different islands around the Amalfi Coast, one of the most popular ones being Capri, which I'm gonna talk about later in this video. And if you do decide to stay in Sorrento, you will see after looking at Airbnb and looking at booking.com that this is the cheapest place for you to stay. When you start to compare the price of staying in Sorrento to the price of staying in other towns like Positano, you'll start to see actually how more expensive it is to stay in the different regions. And then when you factor in the connections that I've explained, you'll see that this clear choice to stay in Sorrento. And for those of you who are wondering how I got such a cheap deal, I will go more depth for this later in the video. So please keep watching or flick through via the index and time stamps in the description. So when is the best time of year to go to the Amalfi Coast? Well, as I said earlier on, this is a very, very popular tourist destination. So for me, the best time for you to visit is either May, early June or September. This way you're able to enjoy the beautiful summer weather while still avoiding the busy crowds. Because the Amalfi Coast has a lot of windy roads, the towns are very, very small, and it can become very, very busy very quickly. So it's always worth trying to avoid the peak months of July and August. As long as you miss these months, I think you can have a great time in the Amalfi Coast. And also if you go off season, it's cheaper as well. So always look to book in May, early June or September. Now, the absolute number one place that everybody wants to go and visit if you do visit the Amalfi Coast is to go and see the island of Capri. This is a beautiful island just off the coast of Sorrento and it is definitely worth visiting. Um, it's very, very easy to get to if you do base yourself in Sorrento, just go down to the docks. You can book tickets on the day and they have regular ferries go and to and from Sorrento. Now, when you do arrive on the island of Capri, you get dropped off in this wonderful little fishing village. Um, but what you'll notice is that it's a very mountainous island. And so the first thing for you to do is to capture a cable car from the bottom of where you're dropped off near the docks, which will take you straight up to the main shopping plaza and main town area of Capri. Now this cable car isn't very expensive. I think it's only about five euros for a return ticket. As you're going up, you get a great view of the island itself. Um, you get, Obviously, if you don't want to do this, you can walk to the top of there, but it does take a while. As I said, it is quite a mountainous terrain and might take you a while to get there. Now, when you get to the top of this area, you a lot of people want to go, where's the best views? Where can I get these great shots, these great nice Instagram worthy shots? Well, I'm going to show you now some of the best viewing platforms you can do on the island. Now, so when you come to the end of the cable car, there is a number of different places you can go. One of the most popular areas is to go to the Botanical Gardens, which gives you a great view of the opposite side of the island itself. Now, because this is a botanical gardens, which are free to get into, it is very, very busy, a little bit crowded, 
um, and can sometimes kind of ruin that experience. But there is one place that I found on Google Maps while I was there, and what they call it is Canon View. And I think the actual Italian name for it, and again, apologies if I'm butchering this language, is Du Ponta Canon. I think that's how it is. I'm gonna put it on the map here right now so you can see exactly where it is. Now, when I went there and I climbed up to that, we were I was the only, me and my girlfriend were the only people on this viewing platform. So we were able to get all the pictures that we wanted to do. And it was quite peaceful just to stand there and just take in the views of the place. And the views are actually better from here than the Botan Botanical Gardens because it's higher up. So you actually look down onto the gardens itself. So this is always worth seeing as your first port of call when you arrive on the island. But if you do visit the Botanical Gardens, what you'll also see is there is a beautiful staircase that you can walk down. Unfortunately, when I went there, I couldn't actually walk down it, but I managed to get some nice pictures of it. So if you are a photographer and you, you want to get a nice, great picture of these famous steps, which I'm sure you see on numerous screensavers and things like that, you're able to get this shot from the Botanical Gardens itself. But for me, the best viewing platform in the island of Capri is a place called Monte Solario. Now to get there, you have to access this through a cable car, but once you do, the views on the top are absolutely stunning. If you wanna have the best views of Capri, this is the best place for you to go. So these are my top places for the best views on Capri. Now, some of you will want to see the best beaches on the island of Capri. And for me, there's only one place that I can recommend, and that is in a place called Marina Piccoloa. So I'm sorry if I've pronounced that wrong, I'm just gonna put it on the maps here. Um, as you'll see, it's on the opposite side from the docks and where you get dropped off. But if you can make this, this has the best views in Capri. As I've shown some of the photos here that you can get, it is beautiful um, and usually it's not that busy. As far as I'm aware, it's a public beach and not private. Um, however, it might change by the time that you visit it, so be prepared to pay for private beaches and this could be an issue for this particular reason there's not a lot of public beaches now also if you do want to see the rest of the island from a different kind of point of view you can actually take a number of tours as well um, which leave from the port um, and they'll take you around the island so you can see where it needs to go and i think there's a few swimming spots that some tours will stop at so you can jump out and enjoy the beautiful coastline um, and i think there's a blue cave as well that you can go and visit um, now for all these tours i didn't go on them so i can't fully recommend a particular one but I've linked it down in the description and you can check this out yourself through get your guide and that's usually the best place for you to do there are a number of stalls where you can just book the trips on the day but if you're someone like me and want to always book in advance so you know exactly what's going to happen now I didn't eat too many things in the island because it's quite expensive but there is one place that I will recommend particularly if you're vegan they do great vegan ice cream at this place and it's called right and again i'm so sorry if i'm going to pronounce this wrong i know i am probably making an idiot of myself it's called the pastigra da alberto okay so here's a picture of it here's where it is here's a video that i took when um, we was eating some ice cream outside it this place and on maps this is where you can find it it's right next to where you get dropped off on the cable car really easy to find so if you want some great ice cream i can fully recommend this place and it's actually not too expensive either which is really really helpful now if there's only one negative that i have about capri it is the boat trip to capri now this is something that we actually didn't find out until we got there um, and once we did research, once we've come back, found that it's quite common. We left Sorrento and it was a beautiful morning. It felt like a great morning. No reason for us to believe that the seas were going to be rough. But wow, when we did, it was unbelievable. And I'm not usually someone who is seasick. Now, the journey itself is only about half an hour. So it's not a very long ferry, you can imagine. And it's the boats themselves aren't actually too big. But I'm telling you the waves was up and down, seriously crashing in. This could have been a bit of an off chance and a bit of an anomaly because of the crew were actually going around and ensuring that everybody was okay. Um, and there was quite a few people that were sick as well. So if someone is quite nervous, I would strongly suggest that you get some travel sickness tablets. Um, now these actually can be found on the island Capri themselves, but I'm also sure they can be found in Sorrento and any kind of um, pharmacies around. Now I think this is so common because when we went into Capri, we walked into the pharmacy that was just outside of the dock and we walked up to the thought, well, how do we say this in Italian? And we just said seasickness tablets and she knew exactly what to get straight away. So I'm figuring that this is quite a common thing. And again, once I looked on Trustpilot or TripAdvisor, again, a lot of people experience the same 
issues. Uh, hopefully this won't put you off visiting this island if you are quite nervous of um, rough seas. Um, but I just wanted to put that out there that this can happen. Um, now, ironically, the weather really come in when I was there. And when the we we saw this huge storm coming in, the weather was actually really calm and it was nowhere near as rough as it was on the way in. So sometimes you don't actually know how it's going to play out. But if you are nervous, my advice is to take some sea sickness tablets and you're fine. I, even my girlfriend, who really doesn't like boats, as you might see from some of my early videos, went on that. After she took her sickness tablet, she felt so much more calmer and didn't worry as much anymore. Now, if you're someone who likes hiking and likes seeing beautiful views, then there is one thing that I think you absolutely have to do, and that is walk on a pathway which is called path of the gods. Now this starts in a town called Bonaramo and ends kind of near the town of Positano. It's quite, a few, the hike will take you a few hours but the sights that you see on this hike are absolutely stunning. Um, it is worthwhile doing, unfortunately I didn't actually have enough time to go and do it, we kind of decided just to miss it off. Um, but it's still something that I would highly recommend that you do. And it also doesn't cost you anything. It's just trying to get there and walk across. Obviously, if you're not someone who likes hiking, skip over that. Um, but if you're like, if you want someone to get great pictures of incredible views around this coastline, this is one of the best hikes you can do. Probably even one of the best hikes you can do in Italy. Now, one of the most beautiful towns on the Amalfi Coast, which is an absolute must see, is the town of Positano. It's a stunning town built right into a cliff and the way in which the architecture and all the houses hang over each other is truly beautiful. But being on the Amalfi Coast, it's also super, super expensive. And also what uh, is always worth mentioning is that the main beach that you see in Positano and is the most easy accessible is a private beach. Now what this means is that there's a number of beach clubs which own certain strips of the beach and you actually have to pay a certain amount of euros and this can change it can be 10 euros or 15 euros depending on whoever the beach club are to access this area of the beach you cannot just turn up and just sit down there is a public beach but i'm talking it's absolutely tiny but if you go in peak season there's no chance you're sitting on this beach now this isn't just a particular issue that happens in Positano. This happens all the way through the Amalfi Coast. So it's one of the things we just got to have to deal with it and realize what area that you're visiting. But if you do want to go to a public beach, there is actually one that is quite accessible and is worth going to. And this is Fornillo Beach. It's apparently it's a local beach where quite a lot of people see. And as you'll see on Google Maps here, it's quite near Ossetano itself. So this is somewhere that is definitely worth visiting and, def and definitely trying to get to if you want to avoid paying for a private beach in the town of Positano itself. Now, when you go and see this town, you can just walk through it and it's beautiful self, see all the different shops and see the different things you can see. Um, there's a beautiful church called the Santa Maria Church, which is always worth seeing. And it has a beautiful square where you can kind of sit back and enjoy the place and where you're in. Usually this is absolutely heathen, but we, when I went, it was the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. Somehow we were able to go in off season as well. So there was literally absolutely no one in this town. Unfortunately though, when we did go, it rained quite a lot. And so we weren't able to appreciate it as much as we probably would have been able to. And now the Amalfi Coast, as I keep saying, is very, very expensive. And if you do want to grab a bite to eat there, it's always best to avoid eating on restaurants that are quite near the beach. The more into the town you go to, the cheaper it becomes. Now, and if there's one food spot that I can recommend, it's a place called the Conalia Positano Bakery. So if you're one of these people that likes getting Instagrammable food, this is the place for you to go to in Positano. Now, because this region is actually known for growing lemons, um, you'll see that absolutely everywhere, all the little, you'll see a number of lemon gift shops. And to go along with this, this bakery, they've created a lemon sorbet, which is stored inside a hollowed lemon itself. Um, and it looks great when you're eating it and it's, it's so refreshing. If you go on a really hot day, I can imagine this is a great thing to have. And, it's, and at this place, you can also get a great pizza. And they also, within this region, do great vegan pizzas. And they haven't gone out of the way to do it, just as it works out. One of the most popular pizzas you can get is a, I don't know, I can't remember the exact name of it. I um, might just list it just here. Um, it's just a pizza base without any mozzarella on it. it. And as we know, if you have a proper Nepalese pizza, it is the base of it is only made from wheat, 
yeast and water. There's no egg or butter involved. Uh, there's no tomato sauce on top of it. Uh, my girlfriend is vegan. This is the options that she had and she said it was a really, really good pizza. So I'd always highly recommend if you want to eat, eat at this bakery. Now if you're someone who wants to get the classic picture of Positano like this one that I'm showing you on screen right now, I'm going to show you where you can take this picture. Now there is a bus that runs through the Amalfi Coast and the spot in which this picture was taken is right next to it. Now I'm going to show it to you right now on the maps itself. So if you just go to this area here and on Google Street View, we just go along and see where that little staircase is just at the beginning of it. That is where this picture was taken. So if you want to have that picture, this is where you go. Now, what I'm going to recommend is something that isn't actually in the Amalfi Coast, but if you're visiting this region, it's an absolute must-see, and that is Pompeii. Now, Pompeii, as we all know, is a archaeological gold mine, and um, it was buried under the ash when Mount Vesuvius erupted. We've all learned it. Um, when we were children and to actually visit the place is quite awe-inspiring. It's absolutely stunning how much was preserved, all the different artwork and the colours, and you can really see quite a high-functioning society. And it's very humbling to see how they would have lived their lives. Now, if you do want to go and see this, see Pompeii, I highly recommend that you book tickets in advance. Um, it's really, really simple to do so, and the links to buying these tickets in advance I have left in the description below. Now, what thing people seem to kind of forget um, is that this is a city. This was a Roman city, and it's big. It's really big, so you can spend hours and hours and hours just exploring through the towns, but. One of the issues is there's not a lot of explanation of what ruin is what and what things you're looking at. So what they usually have when you turn up is a tour guide and there'll be quite a lot of tour guides that will try and pitch you to join their tour whether you can follow them around and learn about Pompeii. Now this is also a really good thing to do. Uh, but sometimes they can be quite expensive, but you wanna have a tour guide, but you wanna do it most cost effective way. I highly recommend that you download Rick Steve's tour guide um, on your phone and just listen to it as you walk around. This is the cheapest way to do it because it's completely free. And for those of you who have never listened to Rick Steve's guides, they're highly, highly recommended. Um, and it's a great way for you to explore Pompeii and understand exactly where you are. He tells you, where to walk to, how to see, and when you're walking in front of things, it's really, really clear. So if you want, if you don't want to pay for a tour guide, I fully recommend that you download Rick Steve's free guide. Now getting to Pompeii from the Amalfi Coast is actually quite simple. Now, if you have decided to stay in Sorrento, it's even easier. I mean, this simply needs to hop on the train, which takes you all the way around to a station called Pompeii Scarvi. Now you can see this on Google Maps. If you simply, if you're unsure of what to do, always look um, on Google Maps and it gives you the best explanation on what trains to get. Now, it's pretty simple to get the train from Sorrento to Pompeii because Sorrento is the end of the line. So there's only one direction that the trains are gonna go to. So you can't really get the wrong train. Um, so, but always make sure if you want to just look on Google Maps so you can be quite prudent and ensure that you know exactly where the train's going and what station you need to get off at. Now, one of the places that is worth seeing in the Amalfi Coast, even if you don't plan on staying and using it as your base, is to visit the town of Sorrento. It has great food restaurants, which aren't actually too expensive, and has beautiful beaches as well. Now, as everything is on this area of the Italian coast, you have to pay. Uh, That's all private beaches. It's about 10 euros, and you can be there for as long as you want. But the water and the area, once you've actually paid for it, is really, really beautiful, and it is a great place for you to relax. So don't see this as a negative of Sorrento. This is just a fact of where you are and the kind of culture that there is with a lot of the beaches. Now, as I kind of closely mentioned, one of the best things about Sorrento is food. And there is beautiful food spots, and I'm gonna recommend a few of them to you now. Now, if you are vegan, there is great options for you in Sorrento and generally throughout this region actually because of the way in which they cook a lot of vegetarian dishes actually end up being vegan quite a lot of the time. Now there's one restaurant which that again has some really good vegan options but isn't actually a vegan re restaurant itself it's a little cafe bistro called enjoy the little things and we actually ended up going here twice if you want to get the carbonara I highly recommend it and some of the tomato pastas as well and particularly the bruschetta. Now, bruschetta in this region 
is beautiful. I've never really had seen the appeal of it, but once you have something from this region, you realize that the tomatoes that we eat at home are not a touch on the authentic tomatoes that are grown in this region. The taste difference is unbelievable. I highly recommend whatever restaurant you go to, get some bruschetta and tell me what you think, because it's honestly, the best thing ever. And within Sorrento, we also have a vegan gelato place, and this place is called Gelato Raki. Um, you can find it just here in the town of Sorrento, and the gelato you get from it is beautiful. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not vegan, but I couldn't tell the difference. Um, it is that good, so I'd highly recommend that you visit um, this place, even if you're not vegan, um, but if you are vegan, um, there is actually completely vegan restaurant in Sorrento and it's called Frankie's Bar Pizzeria. Now you can find this restaurant just here. It's kind of a little bit based on an English pub, but don't let that put you off. The food is actually really, really good. And then particularly if you are with someone who is vegan, like my girlfriend is, it's quite nice and relaxing to see them have a, actually a number of different options. You had vegan cheesecake there, which was beautiful. And again, we had some really good bruschetta and a few other great meals as well. So I'd always highly recommend this place, even if you're not vegan. Now, if you are staying in this region and you've seen the Amalfi Coast and you're see, you've stayed in Sorrento and you've gone to Capri and you've seen Pompeii, you can't really go through this region and not take a day to visit the historic city of Naples. And if you're going to Naples, you absolutely must get a proper Nepalese pizza. This is just something you have to do. This is one of the only places in the world. This is where pizza comes from, so you have to do it. And there's only one restaurant that I would recommend, and that is a place called Pizzeria Dia Michelle. Um, it's it was made famous um, from the Julie Roberts film Eat, Pray, Love. This is where she goes to and has proper Nepalese pizza because it's such a popular pizzeria and it's actually Michelin rated pizzeria it's very very busy when you turn up there's a massive group of people and there's a guy that just write down to your names you tell him how many people you want and you just shout it out however what you need to do is make sure you're aware of the list and where you are on the list because he was shouted out the names we were waiting there for about 40 minutes and then we realized he'd crossed us off thought we he'd taken us in and he hadn't and we actually had to look get quite forceful and say no you've crossed us off the list and we're standing out here still. And then he realized, realized his mistake and took us in. So always make sure that you're like that. Now, this is Italy, it is busy, it's bustly. Don't expect incredible service because that's just not how it's done in pizzerias. Um, just enjoy the chaos um, and the pizzas are really cheap. I'm talking five euros for quite a big pizza and it's probably one of the best pieces I have ever eaten. So I always highly recommend you visit this pizzeria. Now, as for the city of Naples itself, um, there are some wonderful things you can go and do, like the palace is actually worth visiting and it's only about six euros to visit. But apart from a few great shopping spots and a few great architectural spots, Naples, in my opinion, and I don't want to offend anyone um, that is from the region or lives in Naples, it's not the best. Um, it's very, very run down. It's very dirty. There is a lot of rubbish. There's a lot of graffiti. And to be honest, in some areas, I didn't feel safe. It's not somewhere where you'd expect to spend your holiday. That, the, the matter is you have to go through Naples to get to the airport and to get to the Amalfi Coast. It's just something you can do on your way back to the airport, which is exactly what we did. Now, one of the questions that I get asked all the time um, is about getting around. How do you find your way around these different areas of the world. This section of the video, I'm gonna explain exactly the best ways to get around this area of the Italian coastline. Then one of the best things that people usually do is hire a car. Um, now, if you are gonna hire a car, I will highly advise getting the smallest possible car you can get. Now, if you're coming from America, that might be a bit of a culture shock to you, being in a little tiny Fiat 500 or a little Panda, but trust me, that is the best thing to do, and it's the best car for these type of roads. The roads on the Amalfi Coast themselves are tiny little single carriage windy roads, um, and Italian drivers are absolutely crazy. And that's not an offensive thing to any Italians. I think you know that you are quite mad. You kind of go and do your own thing, which is fully respect to you, but for us, 
but for English people or maybe even Americans it is a bit of a culture shock how crazy the road rules are we don't really know what's going on so it's always best to have the smallest car possible usually they're quite nippy and they get around different places but if you're not hiring a car um, it is a little bit more difficult to get to the Amalfi Coast but this is why I always do suggest if you're not hiring a car that you try and stay in the town of Sorrento because that because of the train station the, it gives you that accessibility to see the rest of the region through get up to the dock enables you to go to the Capri and the other islands um, and also there is a bus service which starts in Sorrento and goes through all of the Amalfi Coast towns. Now the return ticket on one of these buses only costs three euros but you can't purchase tickets for this bus on the buses themselves. Doesn't make sense to me but that's just how it is. Um, so if you are purchasing a ticket from Sorrento um, the best thing for you to do here is there's a little off um, shop that sells kind of cigarettes and newspapers and things like that in the train station itself. If you just go there, you can buy tickets for the bus. The bus itself um, starts just outside the train station um, and is quite regular and there's a few of them going back and forth throughout the Amalfi Coast itself. If you're not staying in Sorrento, just visit any kind of local cigarette shops and ask for a bus ticket um, and they will give them to you. If you're arranging your own transport to get to the Amalfi Coast, that's great. But if you want to save money like I do, there's one bus that you get and it just stops. I'm just showing you right now here on Google Maps. Quite simple to get to and again, it only costs a few pounds and you can buy tickets for this on the bus itself. Now this will take you all the way through um, Naples, but the place that you want to get off at is the main train station itself. You get off here uh, and then you walk to the train station and you get any train that is going to Sorrento. Now sometimes the trains aren't running that regularly. I think they come every sort of 30, 40 minutes. And um, so you can be waiting on the platform for a while, but this is the best way for you to do. Now the train is quite old. Um, it does take quite a while to get to um, Sorrento. I think it's about 50 minutes, um, but this is the best and cheapest way for you to do it um, if you're not um, paying extra for a private transfer. Now, some of you may have clicked on this video to say, because I said you can have four days in the Amalfi Coast for 200 13 pounds. Now I'm going to show briefly how I do this. First of all, what you need to do is book off season. I've kind of already mentioned it in the video, but this is really, really important guys. You need to make sure that you avoid July and August. Any other time other than that, it'll be nice and cheap. So first, that is rule number one. The second one is to get the cheapest flights possible. Now I'm not going to go too in depth to this. I've actually made an in-depth video on how I get my cheap flights and I've linked it above me right now. Now, when I went, I actually ended up booking with British Airways. So we actually paid a little bit more to fly with them. And the reason why we did this is because we went in September, 2020, the pandemic was still happening. There was a lot of cancellations with flights and we thought if the worst comes to worst and we weren't able to fly, to Italy, we were able to get our money back easier through British Airways than we would to through Ryanair. So actually you could probably book things quite cheap. Um, so if you want to uh, watch, find out how you can get the cheapest tickets, um, please watch that video. I've linked it in the description below. Please watch that first and then continue watching the rest of this video. Now, I've always said this a number of times on different videos. If you're gonna book anywhere, always try and book through booking.com or Airbnb. Now actually this time, we didn't actually stay in Airbnb. We went through booking.com and we found some great deals. Now for a four night stay, including breakfast, it cost us 138 pounds per person. We, played, uh, we stayed in a place called Hotel Salento um, and it was a really, really nice hotel. To get this prices, ensure that you book through these sites. Um, and the next thing for you to do if you want to get this price is to use public transport and don't hire a car because if you hire a car you have to pay for parking you have to pay for petrol and you have to pay for the car hire itself um, so for me to save money it was easy enough to get around using the public transport available to you and so this was how we were able to do this for as cheap as possible and um, if you do want to hire a car and you're not sure how to do it i have done another video on this which i'm going to link just up here right now and i'll link in the description below for you to watch in that video i go quite in depth on how to save money and get the cheapest deals 
are higher. Um, but it's also worth mentioning that the parking in the Amalfi Coast is really, really expensive. Um, I think it's about six euros an hour to park in the Positano um, in a multi-story, so which is a lot of money. Um, that stacks up because you're using Positano for hours. Um, so if you want to save money and want to get rid of that hassle, get public transport. And now if you follow these steps and have a four night stay, I actually think you'll get it cheaper than £219. This wasn't clickbait. This is legit. That is exactly how much it, it costs for me to go to the Amalfi Coast for four days, including flights. I don't want to mess around here. So if you are struggling and you can't find ways to get this cheap, please let me know in the comments below and I'll always come back to you about this. Now, I hope that this has helped you book your dream trip to the Amalfi Coast. It is a beautiful part of the world and I'm sure if you go and the weather is beautiful and you don't get people throwing up to you when you're on your ferry to Capri, you'll have a great time. Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you've liked this video and it's helped you, please like it. It really helps me out. Subscribe to my channel and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one. See you later.